What is a confounding factor? Confounding factors are components of a study that make it difficult or impossible to estimate the true effect of an intervention because the effect of the intervention cannot be distinguished from the effect of that component. The WWC's definition of a confounding factor has three aspects. The first aspect is that confounding factors are observed study components. Examples of observed study components are characteristics of teachers, schools, or lesson materials. For instance, students' use of computers in the intervention group only is an observed component. Typical unobserved components include characteristics of study participants like motivation or teacher qualifications. The second aspect is that confounding factors are components that align completely with only one of the study conditions. That is, the factor is present for all the units in one group and absent for all the units in the other group. We will illustrate this aspect with an example shortly. The third aspect is that confounding factors are components that are not actually part of the intervention the study is testing. For example, instructional materials provided only to intervention students as part of the intervention don't represent a confounding factor. However, after-school tutoring provided only to intervention students would represent a confounding factor because the tutoring is not part of the intervention. The WWC is concerned about confounding factors because they prevent us from isolating the effect of an intervention. Confounding factors make it impossible to know whether the intervention alone is responsible for the observed effect or the confounding factor is responsible for some or all of the effect. Because of this challenge, any study with a confounding factor will receive a rating of does not meet WWC group design standards. Let's talk about a simple example to help illustrate the definition of a confounding factor. A study examined the effects on math test scores of a pull-out intervention that instructed students in solving math problems with a number line. Students in the intervention group met with a math specialist who delivered the intervention once a week for 12 weeks. During this time, the specialist showed the students how to solve math problems with a number line. The comparison group did not spend time with the math specialist. The WWC considers this design to have a confounding factor because a single individual, the math specialist, administered the intervention. The presence of the math specialist is an observed study component. This single math specialist was present for all units in the intervention condition and was absent for all units in the comparison condition. The intervention is showing students how to solve math problems with a number line. The math specialist who delivered the intervention is not part of the intervention. Therefore, the presence of the single math specialist is a confounding factor. It is impossible to separate how much of the observed effect was due to the intervention and how much was due to the person who implemented the intervention. The study receives the does not meet WWC group design standards rating because we cannot attribute any observed differences in outcomes solely to the intervention. Next, we will discuss different types of confounding factors. One of the most common types occurs when a single study unit, such as a teacher, classroom, school, or district, aligns with one study condition. The WWC refers to this as an n equals 1 confounding factor. To avoid this type of confounding factor, a study must have at least two units in each condition. In group design studies with two conditions, this means the minimum analytic sample size is 4. Anything less would result in an n equals 1 confounding factor. For example, a study that randomly assigns two schools, one to each condition, has a confounding factor because the study cannot distinguish the effect of the intervention from the effect of the school where the intervention is implemented. But this type of confounding factor can also occur with a larger sample, such as when a single instructor provides the intervention to all students and has no contact with the comparison group. As we saw in the math specialist example, this is a confounding factor because it is impossible to determine 
whether the intervention alone is responsible for the observed differences between the intervention and comparison groups, or the instructor is responsible for some or all of those differences. Another type of confounding factor occurs when the characteristics of study units in the intervention group differ from those in the comparison group with no overlap. For this type of confounding factor, the characteristic must plausibly affect outcomes. One example is teacher qualifications. For example, if all teachers in the intervention group have a PhD and no teachers in the comparison group have a PhD, it's possible that something that the intervention teachers learned in their PhD programs contributed to the observed impacts rather than the intervention itself. Another example of this type of confounding factor occurs when the comparison group consists of students who were in the same grade as the intervention group but at a different point in time. For example, suppose the intervention group consists of students who were fourth graders in the 2011-2012 school year and the comparison group consists of students who were fourth graders in the 2010-2011 school year. In this example, time is a confounding factor as the groups are observed in different school years. Why does the WWC consider time a confounding factor? The intervention and comparison conditions align completely with different time periods. It is possible that something changed between the time periods that could cause differences between the groups, such as a change in the school leadership or a new policy. We can't determine whether any observed difference is due to the intervention, to something else that changed over time, or to both. The WWC considers characteristics like teacher qualifications or time periods to be confounding factors when there is no overlap in the characteristic between the intervention and comparison groups. In the example where all intervention teachers have a PhD, if even one comparison teacher also has a PhD, the WWC would not consider the PhD qualification to be a confounding factor. It is important to note that some situations similar to those we just discussed may not always be confounding factors. Based on the WWC's definition, they only qualify as confounding factors when they are not part of the intervention. For example, an intervention might require teachers to have certain qualifications to implement the intervention or the study might be examining the effect of attending a specific type of school, such as a charter school. In these cases, the apparent confounding factor is actually part of the intervention the study is testing, and the WWC would not consider the difference to be a confounding factor.